Problem number two, they're actually going to be looking at a specific question and trying to briefly answer it. Uh, and looking at uh, analyzing some poems which may help support the statement or maybe even refute it. So Blake's characters are most content when they are surrounded by natural beauty and following their natural instincts. To what extent do you agree with this view? Now, Blake frequently, excessively celebrates nature and um, humanity's, ideally, ideally humanity's positive connection to it, predominantly in Songs of Innocence. Um, so he does create these characters that are most contented, they're surrounded by natural beauty, and following their positive, innate, specifically innocent, instincts. However, what's more prevalent in Songs of Experience is the darker side of this relationship between man and nature. It's not reciprocal. There's a sense of exploitation, that man is having a detrimental effect on the natural world. And so we, this is where Blake's protest distinctively emerges, right? That, um, that uh, there should be harmony between man and nature because it's beneficial for, for society and the well-being of the individual. Okay, so if we look at the poem Spring, it is a celebration, an exploration of this harmony. Okay, so if we look at some quotes, um, Merrily, merrily to welcome in the year. This is the refrain of the poem. And so it's repeated at the end of each stanza, which, mean that, which means that there is a continuous reinforcement of this contentment with nature and celebrating the arrival of spring. And merrily, merrily, we have anaphora here, and therefore alliteration and repetition, and that emphasizes this euphoric atmosphere created in the poem. Okay? Blake likes to integrate characters from his other poems, like the little boy and little girl from Little Boy Lost and Found, and Little Girl Lost and Found. And so these are the innocent characters that he uses. Little boy full of joy, so the joy and recognition of the new life that comes with spring. All right, and we have rhyming couplets here, and that helps create this exuberant, childlike, cheerful tone that is prevalent throughout this poem. Little girl, sweet and small, so there's an affinity with what is sweet and small in the flourishing natural world. Now, in the third stanza, it's very important. We see the relationship between the child and the lamb, and it's a microcosm for positive interactions between humanity and nature. We see the innocence in this third stanza of this relationship and an un un unselfconscious sexuality, right? Because of language and imagery like white neck and soft wool. But what I would talk about in relation to this question is the refrain of the end of the poem because it's, it's changed. It uses the first person plural pronoun we instead of two, which emphasizes the unity between the child and the lamb. Okay, laughing song. Laughing song expresses the joys of summer and new life. This is the first line of the first stanza, and this is the second uh, first line of the second stanza. All right, you know, just a couple of examples, but the this sentence structure is pretty much the same throughout the entire poem, with some exceptions. Green was laugh with voice of joy, men was laugh with lively green. And so we see this continuous pastoral imagery throughout the poem. And that depicts the natural beauty of the surroundings. Okay, lively green specifically, that's synesthesia. And that has connotations of freedom, contentment, again, helping cre to create this vibrant depiction of nature. Okay, and we have the repetition of the verb laugh or forms of the verb laugh throughout the poem. And that, again, emphasizes this contentment, this joy and pleasure when surrounded by nature. Okay? Now, more importantly, nature or entities of nature are personified throughout the poem. Okay? And that gives, them, gives these entities spirit, personality, importance. It allows Blake to imbue these entities with emotions of joy. And that is reciprocal in this poem because we see the humans, sweet round mouth, sing ha, ha, he. Okay, and so we see their contentment with nature. It's almost like there's a connection between the emotions of nature and the emotions of the children. Okay, and so it's almost like pathetic fallacy. Now, there's sibilance here, sweet round mouth, sing, and again, it shows that tender, soft tone and the innocence of the children. And ha ha he is onomatopoeia, which is a childish technique, um, which does de depict the childlike happiness in this poem. Specifically, it's children which are which are content when surrounded by nature. Perhaps because 
they are the ones that have this innocence. So maybe you need this innocence in order to be content around nature. Also, just another note, um, the poem is a mixture of iambic and an anapistic meter, and arguably that mimics the rhythm of laughter. So again, we have that um, reinforcement of the tone, the, the, the cheerful, exuberant tone. Okay, the poem at Queen Green is very interesting in relation to this question, because Blake presents two different situations. The first, in the first stanza, we have connotations of birth, new life, the emergence of the beauty of nature, specifically in the day. Okay, and we also have personification, so the influence and power of nature, how central it is to the world of the poem and humanity. So children are playing, they're having fun, they're being innocent, they're following their natural innocent instincts. And on the green is their frame of the poem, which is very interesting and very important we look at the third stanza and the second part of this situation. The sun goes down. The sun does ascend. No more can be merry. Okay? So now it, the, the darkness has overpowered, overshadowed, suppressed this natural beauty. It is the end of innocence. And the siblings here, sun does descend, adds that ominous, sinister tone and atmosphere now. And the model verb can emphasizes this inability to be content because the surroundings are shrouded in darkness. Your innocence is shrouded in experience, you could say. It could be a, a, a reflection of that. And sport no more seen on the darkening green. Specifically, the, the adjective darkening, which changes the refrain of the poem to better suit this now darker situation and imagery. Okay? And so. We see that Blake deliberately does this so that he can use the latter situation to emphasize the former, how children are content when surrounded by natural beauty and they're following their innocent instincts, all right? To play, to have fun, be content around nature. In experience, in the poem London, specifically the first stanza, Blake conveys the deplorable conditions and emotions associated with urban life indicating the negative impact on nature due to urban surroundings and therefore suggests that in contrast people are more content when surrounded by natural beauty as was clearly shown in the innocent section of the anthology which comes before experience now here blake describes the street and river themes as charted he uses the adjective charted deliberately to criticize the imposing control that institutions are tending to have on nature and society. So we see, as a consequence, um, the streets of London are immersed in oppression and people become less content. And this is emphasized with marks of weakness, marks of woe, with the alliteration, anaphora, and repetition, helping the reader to fully comprehend the extent of this situation. Now, Blake seems to focus more on criticizing the negative impact on nature in experience rather than explicitly indicating the, uh, that, that people are content when surrounded by natural beauty. Maybe this is a limitation to the statement as it is clear that predominantly the characters in innocence are the ones that are content when surrounded by nature, whereas in experience the characters are undeniably um, presented in a negative light. Thank you.